Well, good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here. Um, and of course, first of all, I want to thank you, all the doctors that are following my work. For me, it's a big pleasure to, to share all my knowledge with you. Uh, and uh, all of you that know me, you know that I'm really passionate about all the things that I'm doing every day. And that's why I love to, to share it with you. Uh, of course, you have all my contacts and I love your questions and, and, and for me when I have time because sometimes it's, 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 it's almost impossible to, to answer all the questions but for me a big pleasure to help you. I want to share with you a, a case about, uh, uh, about uh, s how to solve an, a classical occlusion using uh, MinoScript in order to make it more predictable and also in order to increase the anchorage uh, to solve and, and, and to increase the predictability of, uh, of, a, of the solu finding a solution of a classical malocclusion. Uh, this case I, I'm going to show you is a case that came to my office uh, with this uh, aesthetic of the smile. When he came, he came just complaining about, the, about her smile, his smile, sorry, but uh, also look into the inside of the face. This is the situation that we found look at the, well, he came with a really poor hygiene, but also he is also developing a lot of, as you can see here in canines and also in premolar, he is also developing also a lot of uh, reflections everywhere. When we analyze uh, also the, the picture, we also can see that the torque of the upper and lower premolar is uh, really negative, and uh, this is producing also a pre-contact between the buccal cusp in upper and lower premolar, and it can be increasing also the, the, the evolution of the rotation. Uh, the most important thing when we analyze that, that we can see here, we, we have a full class two in the right side. Uh, we have more or less a class one in the left side, but a, a full class two in the, in, the, in the right side. And also, as you can see here, that is related to the bigger rotation in the in this right hand. Okay, we can also see that uh, this patient has a really narrow arch upper and lower, with this crowding in the lower in the lower arch, and also in the upper arch. We can see that we have also the second uh, the, uh, the wisdom molar in the in the right side, and this is very important to analyze because depend on the protocol that you are going to use to solve a class two, sometimes you have or you don't have to remove or to extract the wisdom mold, okay? My challenge in this case, okay, when I do the planification of my cases, uh, I only have, uh, uh, I always have uh, these goals in my mind. I want to design a beautiful smile in my patient, but also I want to design a perfect occlusion in order to give a stability to the case, okay? So my challenge is how can I solve this full class two in the right side to a beautiful and nice class one, maintaining also a good uh, transversal uh, dimension and also a good torque in the incisor. Okay, this is my challenge. So how to move from this situation where I have to distalize more than eight millimeters and also I cannot procline the lower incisor in order to not to lose the over jet that I need to solve the class two and also not to increase the rotation that the patient is developing. So this is an, a, a big challenge, how to do that, okay? So when I sent the, the HRF scan, the first thing that they sent me, it was with 51 aligner, and I start working that like that, and I reduce the liner to uh, 36, where what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the right, sorry, let's go back again. I'm going to s use the left side as anchorage, and I'm going to do a distalization of the right side in order to uh, solve this class two, in order to make also symmetric the, the upper arch, okay? So you can see here, well, what is the movement? We're going to use the left side as anchorage. We put the, the stool, and then we move all to the, we, dis we distalize all. So we start distalizing second and first molar, okay? And after that, we do distalization of everything, okay? 
So what I told you, we use the left side as anchorage, and we are looking for this position. We are looking for these spaces there. So if we see that these spaces are creating, it means that everything is working fine, okay? So this is the space. When we have this position, that what I'm going to do is exactly the same what I have in the mount. This intrusion into Imola is something typical, but I don't mind about that because we can solve that in the second phase. And in that moment, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a minuscule here and in this minuscule, I'm going to use a direct bonding, a direct anchorage to the molar in order to prevent the nasalization. And also, the patient is going to eat both elastic, one at night, a class two elastic, and also another one uh, to the minuscule, okay? You can see here the minuscule. You can see here the direct bonding, the elastic, elastic, and after that, we do the refinement, where we're going to solve the occlusion. We're going to increase that. And this is the final position that I plan with my clinches. And you can see that this is exactly what I got in my patient. From here to here, exactly the same. If you do a good job, of course, you can achieve exactly the same. Look at the position that I plan in my case, and exactly I obtain exactly the same in the most of my patients, both class two, both sides. And the most important, one of the most important, look at the recession in the canine. It's also better than the, the beginning because I could also move the root inside the bone. Okay, I change also the shape of the upper arch to more parabolic and the upper and lower. And after that, we do some small aesthetic changing the, the shape of the, of the incisal edge just in, in order to increase uh, and to improve the, the, the shape of the, of, the, of the incisors. Now the patient is ready to start with the, with the gingival regeneration that we are going to start doing in, in the four quadrants, the final smile. How we move from here with this big deviation, the midline to the left, and how we center to the right, and also how we solve the class one uh, from the class two to the beautiful class one, beautiful change in the shape of the arch, beautiful arch shape, and all done in uh, less than a year and a half. So it's possible to do that. It's possible if you understand me. What is the biomechanics? What is the what are the facing of the that we have to respect? and working, of course, with a lot of desire and a lot of passion. So thank you very much again to be here with me. Please send me your message, write me emails, and it will be my, my, my big pleasure to, to help you to grow in the, your professional career with, with, with orthodontics and with invisible techniques, okay? Thank you very much.